General Motors confirms it will invest an extra $1 billion across several U.S. factories and will bring in-house some production now being done in Mexico. This comes as GM and other automakers have been on the receiving end of pointed criticism from President-elect Trump. Joining us now to discuss is WSJ Autos reporter Mike Kalias in Detroit. Hi, Mike. Thanks so much for being with us. What more can you tell us about GM's announcement today? Expected. I mean, if you saw uh, President-elect Trump's press conference last week, he thanked Ford and Fiat Chrysler for announcing investments uh, in recent weeks, and he said, "I'm, you know, I'm sure that GM will follow." So I think he really put the ball in their court. Uh, I think this was something that we that we expected, and really, when he, you know, when he puts uh, these companies on, uh, you know, in this in this position, they're 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 sort of forced to respond. So Trump was certainly quick to take credit. Within half an hour of the announcement, he had tweeted this. With all of the jobs I'm bringing back into the U.S., he tweets, even before taking office, with all of the new auto plants coming back, I believe people are seeing the big stuff. So do you think he can take credit for this? Well, it's, you know, it's a really tricky spot for these companies because you know, on the one hand, they are forced to respond. And so what you see is is a lot of these companies going and packaging things that were sort of already in the works, maybe accelerating the announcement time frame of them. Um, but in, in each case, they've all said, look, this is a business decision. We, we answer to our shareholders. Um, you know, we share uh, President-elect Trump's uh, commitment to U.S. jobs. So, you know, on the one hand, they're saying, look, this basically would have happened anyway. On the other hand, you know, as, as one GM executive told me yesterday, he said, look, this, this, is, this is the dialogue that's out there. We need to get our story out, which is, you know, which is what these announcements really are. The spin. Now, as you mentioned earlier, Trump had been going after Ford more frequently in the recent past. Ford and Fiat Chrysler Automobiles had already announced fresh U.S. investments in recent weeks. So is that why Trump, do you think, had been turning up the heat on GM more recently? Yeah, you know, it was the chance to get the third Detroit automaker. And really, if you look at it, it was it had been a bit of a head scratcher as to why he seemed to go after um, Ford, you know, repeatedly on the campaign trail the way he did. And even even after the election, uh, if you look at GM, they seem to be a little more vulnerable to this kind of attack. I mean, you know, obviously the the, the backdrop of the 2009 bailout um, is a big part of that. But they're also they import more cars uh, from GM or from Mexico than Ford does. And they also, in recent months, have announced a lot of uh, U.S. layoffs at, at car factories. So, you know, they were sort of they were sort of ripe for the picking here, I think. And, you know, this gives this, this gives Trump his, his third of the three Detroit automakers that have stepped forward with plans. And he certainly zeroed in on them recently. Here's a soundbite from a presser just last week. I appreciate that from Ford. I appreciate it very much from Fiat Chrysler. Uh, I hope that General Motors will be following. Now, we know that GM chief executive Mary Barra, uh, you know, made the statement. Barra and GM, as you said earlier, are implying this investment was already in the works, not necessarily a reaction to pressure from Trump. Do we know how much personal contact Barra and Trump have had? Yeah, we learned that she called him um, the day of his tweet on January 3rd, it was. Uh, he came out and criticized some um, small cars, some Chevy Cruises that, that GM brings over from Mexico now. 98% of the car, the Cruises that they sell in, in the U.S. Are, are built in the U.S. But nonetheless, um, she called him, they talked, and I found out a little bit more about the conversation yesterday through their general counsel, confirmed that they talked trade policy, they talked regulations? Is there anything that the auto industry would, would like to see? So I think she's sort of, and she's on, she has a position on his policy council of, of economic uh, you know, business leaders. And so I think uh, GM hopes that she sort of positioned herself to be um, certainly the face of the company and maybe even a, a bit of an ambassador for the industry, just given her high profile. All right, Mike Kalias, thank you so much for that. Thanks very much.